This is a 2012 McLaren MP4-12C, and I have now owned it for two years completely out of warranty. Now, if you haven't seen my first video on one year out of warranty, I'll link that below so you can check that out. And then we're gonna talk about what has changed here. Stick with me, you might be surprised at what the cost of ownership actually is. At the end of the last video, the one year, I had something happen on the way to filming that video. I had a rock come up and hit that windshield, which I did have to get replaced. Didn't know how much it was gonna be then, but I do now. The cost of replacing that windshield is $6,878. That's a $6,800 windshield. Fortunately, I live in a state where if you have full coverage, you have a zero deductible insurance claim. So that windshield didn't cost me anything. But the first one they put in had a small visual defect in it, so they replaced it a second time. The first one I had in five days. It was the only one in the country. The second one took four months to get. So keep that in mind if you're gonna wait on a windshield. Last year I said I drove this car 9,200 miles in the first 365 days of owning it. I fell a little bit short on the second year. The car now has just under 32,000 miles. I bought it with 16,000 and I put almost 7,000 miles on it in my second year of ownership. Now, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself as I really thought I was gonna be closer to 9,000, but between a very uh, harsh winter that uh, it was very bad with different snow and ice, which is not fun to go drive in, so I don't if it's not gonna be fun. And then everything locked down from pandemic. So I didn't get to put quite as many miles on it uh, between January and June. I haven't really put that much on, but I think I was actually on pace to go over 9,000 over that one year. So let's take a look at everything that has changed on the car and the cost of everything that I've done and the cost of maintenance. At the end of the one year video, I said that nothing broke and everything was fine. Well, right after that video, something broke. The mirror, the motorization on it broke right here. This would not fold back out after it was folded in. I left the filming location, which was right here a year ago. I went to a casino, folded in, Went to go leave the casino, would not fold out, got to drive two hours home with the driver mirror not folded out. That was inconvenient. So how did I fix that? Well, I could have bought the replacement motors and that kind of thing, but I didn't. I posted asking, do I need to buy an entire motor? I waited for an hour and nobody answered. So I took the mirror apart. I took the motor out of the entire assembly, found a broken gear, glued the gear back, put it all back together, and uh, about 45 minutes later, mirror is working. And uh, one year later, it is still working. So that's a fix and I made a video on that. Also since then, I have had the headlight fogging problem on one of my lights and it just had a bunch of moisture in it. I didn't develop any mold like some of them do, but I did have to fix that. And to do that, you have to take the front bumper off, which is not that big of a deal. You take the bumper off, you take the headlight out, you put it in the oven, you heat it up, you just smush it back together, everything is resealed. You don't even have to add any more to it in some cases like mine, and that was fixed. However, when I took this off, I didn't know that there's an ambient air temperature sensor right down here. And you think that's only for reading the outdoor temperature in the instrument cluster. It's not. It also does other things with the car. The radiator fans will run constantly if you don't have that reading a correct temperature because it is assuming that the car is extremely hot so run it for 15 minutes after you shut the car off the entire time you're running it it just runs them constantly so i did have to replace that it was a very short wire i didn't even know it when i broke it off uh, i only realized that when i went to go put it back in the way that you're really supposed to do it is to take the front part of the frunk out so you can unplug that then take the bumper off seems kind of dumb but that's the way it is that sensor was $209. I had no cheap fix for that. I didn't know where to find it. I didn't know who may have OEM'd it. So I had to buy the McLaren part, $209. So the free fix was $209. The underbody strakes that do break because they're made of plastic and they're almost consumable as you go over speed bumps and that kind of thing. Uh, mine did break again. I made some fiberglass replacements. Uh, I'll be making more fiberglass replacements and I will be selling those as well because they do last longer than the factory. They do work better, but mine on the front 
have broken. Uh, they just cracked out, so I'm just gonna replace them with new ones. Uh, so there's that. And then there's also these little pieces right down here that uh, I have one entirely missing and one mostly broken. And McLaren wants $240 to replace one of those. So I'm going to 3D print my own and sell those as well. I'll just recreate it exactly how the factory one was, uh, print up a new one. It'll be good as new for not that much cost. Another thing I've done this year is added soft closed doors. If you don't know what soft closed doors are, the door opens normally, but instead of slamming these like you typically have to do, you can just lightly close it, door gets pulled in, latches, and you don't have to tell people to slam the door. It's easy on all the components in the door. It's a nice little touch. That cost me 150 bucks. If you buy the parts from McLaren, they're gonna be $2,000 to $3,000. And uh, these are actually from a Tesla Model S. Pick these up, use. It's actually the same latches. I did an entire video on that. Out and back, I refreshed the armadillo because that tends to get a little sun faded, but I've also done some exhaust modifications. I put catalyst downpipes on this, and my cost was only what I had in value of a trade that I did, and I had $1,100 in those. So I saved quite a bit of money. They're normally about $2,400 for these. I've got the Cook's catalyst downpipes. So I have $1,100 tied up in those. I did the cat back. I made it myself. I made an entire video about it. I have $300 and all of the pipe work, the round tips, the carbon fiber plates, I made all of that stuff. It even fools people that think that is factory. I've only got 300 bucks tied up in that. Sometimes when you're doing DIY things, you might make a mistake. And sometimes you need the dealer to correct those because you don't have dealer level tools as I do not. And I've only experienced that twice. One of those times was when I did the soft closed doors I accidentally woke the car up while I had the harness to the seat belt unplugged, which caused an airbag fault. An OBD2 scanner will not clear that. You have to either have the dealer do it or what I did. I took out the airbag module from the car, sent it to a company in Georgia that will clear it. They cleared it, sent it right back, put the module in, everything's fine. That cost me $81. Had I taken it to the dealer, that would have cost me 180 minimum. So there are some savings there wasn't that bad to do. The second time is doing the exhaust. Now this air brake has to be in a very specific spot and it's expecting to be there. And if it's not there, it throws an error. So you can move it up manually and you can move it back down. If you don't put it back in the exact same spot, you're going to get an air brake fault and then it has to be resynced. So I don't have the dealer level tools. I had to get it resynced. That cost me $180 to have the dealer do that because I had it up and down and up and down and up and down while I had this apart, taking it on and off and moving it around. So that was a bit of my mistake there, uh, but it was one of those things that in developing this entire cat back had to be done uh, to have this and do all the testing I needed to do. But all of this realistically ended up being a whole lot cheaper. If I would have purchased a cat back that wouldn't have sounded anything like this, it would have started at about $2,500 and they go all the way up to, I think, $12,000. So a lot to be said to save there. Has a unique sound that you will not find on another McLaren ever because I made it and I did make a video on the development of this exhaust. But it does fool people into thinking it's factory, so I guess my craftsmanship is okay. It has a very unique sound that everyone loves and I'm very happy with only spending $300 on the catback. Now, starting last fall, I started doing autocross and I do enjoy it quite a bit and I've been doing it ever since. So that leads into wear and tear. The tires, I'm about halfway through on the back. The front, I've still got plenty. Uh, I've got quite a few miles. I've actually had these tires on here for over a year. And uh, like I said, we're, we're about halfway through. Uh, so I'm expecting to get in the neighborhood of about 20,000 miles out of these rear tires, uh, depending how much track days will affect that. I also have uh, protection film uh, on this entire car, and I do have some spots that need to be uh, replaced, some sections, because I have had damage from various things in the road, uh, gravel, any number of things, uh, because I actually do drive the car, and I drive it as it wants to be driven, on a track, on the road, and sometimes off-road. So there's a few 
nixing things here that need to be cleaned up on that. I'll get around to that. Not necessarily a maintenance thing, but something that should be done. So my actual maintenance costs of things, I've got my list. When I was doing the exhaust, I went ahead and did these spark plugs. Uh, when you're tuned like I am, it does help if you have a tighter gap on your plugs. Uh, so I went ahead and replaced those while everything was apart because they are kind of a pain. Those plugs cost me $72 for all eight of them. It's because I didn't get the McLaren plugs. McLaren plugs, they uh, they want, I think it's a $32 or $36 each. So didn't use theirs, uh, which wouldn't have the smaller gap anyway. Uh, $72 on those. Oil change, again, you saw the one I did last year, cost $96. Dealer charges about $600, $650, depending where you go. A lot to be saved there. Cabin air filter, did a video on that as well. It cost me $19. That same filter from McLaren is $135. Why? I don't know. But $19 replace that cabin air filter. I'll replace that thing every year, like they say, if it's actually dirty, which it won't be. Mine wasn't too awful. Replaced anyway, $19. Key fob battery. Uh, if you have that die, while you're driving somewhere, it'll stay running, but as soon as you shut it off, it might not start again. In one day uh, doing autocross, I had the car started off, started off, started off, and it's a number of times that it will continue to work, not a duration. I found on the way home that the battery can die, and then you can't start your car and you have to buy or borrow, in my case, a battery from your friend's key fob to get home. So keep an extra battery in your console I do now, I didn't then. That battery cost me $3. If you get it from the dealer, it's six. I don't know if they charge labor to swap out or not, but they might, who knows. Uh, then the more major service, the transmission service and the clutch service. Those, uh, you're supposed to do in increments of 10 and 20,000 miles. I am due for those. Uh, so I have all the materials to do those. I haven't done it yet. That'll be coming here very soon. I will be doing videos on those as well. The transmission service is $306 for a new filter and all the fluids. The clutch service for a new filter and all the fluids is $204. I'm just over $500 into doing the clutch service and the transmission service swapping out the filters that you might be able to clean out, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to replace them, all the fluids. And if you have the dealer do it, that's going to cost you over $3,500. So saving $3,000 by not using their fluids that are marked up incredibly high. The filters you do have to get from the dealer. I got mine from McLaren Houston. They hooked me up, gave me a really good price on it. So I'd recommend getting filters from them. So now the final breakdown of what I have spent in year number two, out of warranty, service, modifications, everything. My cost of ownership short of insurance and car payment. Maintenance only, $700. That's it. For just a little bit more than the cost of one oil change at the dealer, my entire annual maintenance, plus some for the transmission and the clutch. 700 bucks. That's pretty low by standards of any exotic or even a Mercedes. That's pretty low. Modifications and any brake fixes, so anything that actually went wrong, which really is nothing that I didn't cause myself. $2,020. That's soft closed doors, all of my exhaust stuff, replacing the sensor that I damaged, having the module reset, getting the air brake recalibrated, all of those were on me, $2,020. So quite a bit more, almost triple the cost of the actual maintenance of just driving the car for a year. Total spent, $2,720. That's really not that much for a McLaren or any exotic car, but for everybody who says that these are really expensive to own and really expensive to maintain, they're not. They're only expensive as you make it. If you make spark buys with your parts and your materials, you do the labor yourself or have a, a very good independent mechanic that's not going to charge, you know, $200 an hour. These really aren't bad to own. And this one has been rock solid, reliable. 
I have no complaints. I've driven it hours and hours straight as much as uh, eight and a half hours straight where it was still comfortable, no issues, everything was wonderful. This was absolutely a great purchase. I would recommend buying one yourself. So if you're looking at buying one of these cars and you hear it's a maintenance nightmare or anything like that or reliability problems, see where your sources are. Is it somebody who's actually owned one or somebody who's just repeating things that they kind of heard on the internet and whatever? Because everyone that I know that's got these have been say they're, they're solid. Uh, if you are looking to buy one, I bought one with 16,000 miles, that's high miles. Those are gonna be the ones to buy. The low mile ones are probably the ones that you might have some issues with various seals and that kind of thing because they weren't driven. So I said it last year, I'll say it again this year, wonderful car, wonderful value. Don't be scared of these things. Buy one with some miles on it. If you don't have that many miles on it, get out and drive it and you'll have less problems or no problems in my case. Definitely a great buy. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out the other maintenance videos and upgrade videos that I post that I've done on this car that are all instructionals on how you can do the same thing yourself so you can save all this money. Thank you for watching.